I am Ian Matthews and this is another Tango Taster. I'm going to be looking at contextual menus here because I've been to a few schools recently and tried to push the idea of press and hold and see what it can do a bit more. So to enlighten you a bit more about that, what I'm going to do is going to look at some individual elements within a Tango workspace in this created lesson as it stands and press and hold and see what it can do. I'm starting with the fact that I'm at this side of the board. That's because normally when the toolbar comes up, it's at the right hand side. But in this case, what I've done is press and held on the toolbar and it came up with a move to the other side of the screen banner. If I press that, it brings it up over there. As before, press and hold, move to the other side of the screen, brings it back to where I am now. And that can be good if you have something at the right hand side of your screen or if you have um, things in your classroom that might take up that side of the screen that would prevent you getting to the toolbar as easily as it would um, in normal circumstances. Um, so th that's the one for the, the toolbar. Um, we can do things with individual text boxes whereby if I press and hold, I'll do it over here, press and hold, I'm going to get some very simplistic stuff. I'm going to see unpin, link to page, link to file, link to web page, straighten, pick colour, edit and delete. That's because text like uh, drawing works in roughly the same sort of way. It's not necessary to think of um, those types of elements as overly complex for Tango. So it doesn't want to overburden you with things like crop. It doesn't want to think about um, exporting certain elements just yet. It just sees it as a basic text or a basic um, image effectively. So in this case, I can unpin. It's gonna allow me to move this part of the text around. It's gonna allow me to link to part file, web page. If I'm going to press link to web page, it's going to bring up a text box where I can www dots and place in whatever I want to do. It could be that I've got um, copy paste um, something from Word, let's say I've got a, a URL already prepared. So I could have pressed and held control C or I could have right click copy and just hit the paste button and that will bring that in there. Um, I can also do things like delete, which is obviously going to be one of the first things you go to if you just um, practicing with this place. Um, straighten. Straighten is quite important to me because when you have lots of things around a board it can very easily become a bit um, chaotic and I like to have things very much in a certain place at a certain time. So pin back to location there. Images work a bit differently. So this PNG image of Louisiana, if I press and hold on that, I'm going to have a load more different um, opportunities to play with it. Such as the same as before, the straight turn, the links page and so on. But now I have things like share, duplicate, copy, set as background, and something that says clear annotation. The clear annotation one comes from the fact that every image effectively will have, you can just about make it out there, the annotation button attached to it. You also have a banner at the bottom that's now appeared to show how you can tap on that to do the same thing. If I tap on it, I can, in effect, draw on an image. And drawing on that image means it will stick to that image. Press and hold it, and clear annotation from here will get rid of it. Everything should be relatively straightforward, but as we're trying to show here, everything is about pressing and holding for the contextual menu. So share, for example, will send out in collaboration, and that's going to be a future video on how to collaborate with this as well. Set as background. Well, that's how I've got this Bayou scene, by finding a decent uh, quality JPEG or PNG, an image file, and setting it as my overall background by tapping that. If I'm going to export it, what it'll do, it will take that individual file, that individual element, and drop it onto the desktop. That's how I tend to like um, showing progression and saving things. So if I've made something with lots of annotation on it that the learners have done, I like to press and hold, select export, and drop it onto the desktop. Um, straighten, talked about before, as I said, uh, pick colour. If you want to try and make something in the writing style of, let's say you're writing what this represents, if I press and hold this and pick colour, what it's effectively doing is it's going to go back to the drawing tools and it's going to make that colour exactly the same as that. If I tap that, it's then allowing me to select a pen that will follow that exact same colour. As before, if I tap that off, I'm going to press and hold on this one, pick colour, it's going to turn it to that colour. Tap that one, and I can draw the follows the same. Hopefully, hopefully, Tango's relatively straightforward thinking in this respect. The idea is to try and just press and hold, as I keep saying, and uh, figure out what this stuff can do. You might have a few different things, so on a map, for example. If I press and hold on a map, it's going to add things like go to street view, markers, because top left of a map, you have the opportunity to access not only different types of map, but also you can 
check a place out. So if I were to type in Baton Rouge, it would find all the different Baton Rouges in the world and it would access it. But pressing and holding the map, I can remove those markers or go to Street View within that place as well. The background as well works with a press and hold. So if I press and hold on the background, beg your pardon, that's it a bit further across. I have the opportunity to add things like um, pasting images, pasting videos, pasting text from outside itself, uh, from outside Tango. I can lock the screen so that learners who might be um, want to come and move things around aren't able to do so, and exit along with minimise. The minimise and exit stuff kind of come, came from the idea that if you've got X's and minimises at the top of the screen that certain learners or staff can't reach, well they can press and hold and access the same thing from the side. In this case though, the only reason you're going to be probably checking that on the background is to either paste something in, so if I had the URL of a YouTube video for example, I can then paste that directly into the workspace, and that's on a previous video as well. The background will allow us to look through some of our pre-loaded background images, such as writing stuff, um, we have pinboard style things, but you can almost make your own toy box of ideas in that respect, and I'm going to come on to toy boxes in the next video. So, that's kind of the idea of pressing and holding. There are lots of different things you can do with press and hold within videos, within maps, within images, within writing and so on. But please, try and have a go at it yourself. Try and sort of get your head around how this could work in the future for you in a way that's going to be easy and um, easily understood.